Now what I need is a way to toggle any given recipe into my meal queue. So to do this, I'm actually gonna jump into my meal manager here and just say toggle in queue. And essentially what that's gonna do is take in self, our user ID, and then the recipe ID, right? So the idea is pretty straightforward as far as what we need to do here. If the item, if the recipe item is currently pending, then we're gonna move it to being aborted. If it's not pending, then we're gonna add it to pending. Okay, cool. So let's first off, start off with our query set for our user ID here. So it's gonna be self.get query set and then dot by user ID. We could also just do dot all just to be on the safe side, but we should be able to do dot user ID here and we'll filter that through. So now what I wanna check is if it's already in queue or already queued up, right? So to do that, we'll go ahead and add a, another model manager and I'll define in queue and it's gonna take in self and the recipe ID. This of course is gonna go ahead and then return self.pending so really looking in the pending items, dot filter and recipe ID equaling to recipe ID, and then just simply exists, right? So is it in the queue or not? So qs.nq of that recipe ID. Simple enough. So now if it is already queued, then I actually want to filter this query set down again and update it. So let's now say recipe QS is equal to the query set dot filter. And similar to what we just did here, where is the actual recipe? We are just gonna go ahead and grab this right here. Filter the recipe down. And so recipe QS dot update, changing the status for every recipe item in this query set. Now, more than likely it will only be one item, or at least it should be if we do this toggle correctly. But if you were to accidentally add it somewhere else or you had some feature where it added it somewhere else, this would be a quick way to make sure that all of those are no longer the same status. And so the status we want is of course aborted. I no longer need this meal choices here, but I do want to board it here for this status. So meal status dot aborted. Okay, simple enough. And otherwise, if it's not already queued, then we'll go ahead and say obj equals to self.model and we'll create the model itself. So user ID is equal to the user ID. Again, remembering back to foreign keys themselves, they have an implicit field in here that is related to the ID field of the foreign key object. So your user ID can be set in this manner. And that's also true for the recipe ID. Of course, it's also true for the filtering if you weren't already clear on that. And in this case, I'll go ahead and add in my explicit status that I want. Certainly it is the default here, but if you were to change the default, this would make sure that that is in there. And then we'll just do obj.save, and then we wanna return something. So the idea is I actually wanna return if it was added or not, or potentially the ID of it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say added being none. Okay, so in here, if it is added, we're gonna go ahead, or remove rather, we'll go ahead and say false. And then if it is added, we'll go ahead and say true, okay? So again, we could return the recipe ID that is added or even the the actual menu item ID that's you know added as well. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave it in as added or not and then return that back, okay? So now that we have this ability to toggle and the ability to check how pending items are doing, it's time to actually test all of this stuff because that of course is critical to everything. And so the testing portion is gonna be, again, very similar to the recipes. So let's go ahead and grab the recipe tests and copy the whole thing. I might not need all of these tests here, I probably won't, but the nice thing is we've already gone through a lot of these tests that we might need to do. Okay, so first thing is updating our recipes item here. I definitely do not need the user test case. This time I'm gonna call it a menu 
or rather a meal test case. I do need a user, I do need a recipe, um, maybe a few recipes, some recipe ingredients, and then all of these other tests I probably won't really need because I'm testing based off of the menu itself. Okay, so what are the setup process that we want? Well, we definitely want the user A. I'm also gonna go ahead and say user ID is equal to self.user A. And then we want recipe A and maybe another recipe, so recipe B and recipe A. We also wanna make sure that we have some ingredients because we'll use those later, at least for one of them, that both don't have to be in there. Um, there we go, okay, cool. So that's simple enough. So what I wanna do now is I wanna actually make some meals in here as well. So let's go ahead and do from dot models import meal. So in the setup process, we create some meals. So first of all, I'll just go ahead and create one meal and say self.meal is equal to meal.objects.create. And the user is equal to self.user a, I believe we called it right there. And then the actual recipe itself is going to be any of these recipes. So I'm going to leave it in as recipe a like we have right here. Okay, simple enough. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a, another meal. We'll just call it meal B. And this time I'm gonna make it completed. Again, the recipe itself doesn't really matter. What matters is the status of this item. So we'll go ahead and say status is equal to, well, we need to grab that meal status item here and import as well. Okay, so meal status and completed. Okay, so one started, one completed. Now we're gonna go ahead and verify those two things. So first off, verify or test, you know, pending meals or really test the queue itself. And so the query set should be pretty straightforward. So query set equals to meal.objects.all and we can do self.assert equal, and there's gonna be qs.count being one. And along these lines, we can test out the other portions here. So that is by user ID. So query set two here, or one or two, whatever. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually do by user ID, self.user ID. Remember I said that right here. And that should give me the exact same value, right? And so that's a simple way to do pending. Along those lines, we can actually do test completed. Okay, uh, one of the things I didn't do in here was just dot pending and dot pending. Okay, so down here, dot completed and dot completed. Let's go ahead and test it with Python manage.py test and meals, the actual app name itself. And there we go. So we've got meal manager has no attribute by user ID. Uh, of course it doesn't, we have to actually add it in as all here, or better yet, it'd be a good idea to have maybe both of these as model manager items up here or right there. And then instead of filter, it's get query set dot by user ID and then passing that user ID. Okay, same here, query set and then by user and passing in our user. Let's try it again. And we got indentation issue. Yay, testing. Okay, cool. Um, so now those two things work. Right, so simple, simple tests that hopefully is like a huge recap for you. So now what we need to do is test whether or not the toggle works, this toggle in queue. Um, so to do this, it's gonna be a couple things. We'll define uh, test add item via toggle. Okay, so the item itself, I need to actually create a new item uh, somewhere, right? Well, I actually did create an extra item here that has completed, so that really doesn't do anything for me, but I can still use this same sort of methodology and create it actually here. 
And so this should allow me to, well, of course, get rid of this status here. So this should allow me to actually check, you know, if the user is pending, right? So how many items are in the queue before and after, right? So I don't actually need to test beforehand. I would really just need to test after, and this should now be two, right? So this should test by adding one, and then we've got a new pending item. So let's go ahead and add that. This of course is not the toggle, right? This is just verifying that it's actually adding one without the toggle. So now let's go ahead and use the toggle itself. So the toggle again was toggle in queue. So now by toggle or did toggle, or rather we called it added equals to the meal objects toggle in queue. This of course cannot be the same recipe because that recipe is most likely already in there. Again, we are testing adding it. We are not trying to remove anything here. So we definitely want the user ID. Now we want a new recipe ID in here as well. So scrolling back up, I'm gonna go ahead and add recipe C and just call this, you know, something random like nachos, okay? So recipe C is nachos. And so that's the one that I'm gonna go ahead and use the ID for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and do self.recipec.id. And so what we want is a couple things. We can now assert that this should be three now. So let's do QS2 here. And then we should also be able to assert true. So self.assert true, and that's gonna be added. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this again. And so we should get everything correct. Uh, our user, except for when we don't put self dot, you know, the fun things about writing tests. Um, okay, cool. So we've got the field um, ID instead of the user, expected a number, but got a user element here. Uh, so somewhere in here, we've got an invalid item. So let's go ahead and look in our test queue. We've got by user ID here, should still be by user ID. So user ID is there. Okay, so that should be all right, the ID itself. Um, and so let's look back into our test. And so we're getting ID got a number or expect a number, but got that user. So maybe user ID here is not actually the user ID and it's not. So this should be dot ID. Great. Try again and there we go. So it actually did toggle it correctly. It added it in to the queue, or at least our tests are proving that being the case. So now we wanna test remove item via toggle. And yet again, we could use a recipe itself, right? So this time I can actually toggle it based off of recipe A, right? So this time we really can just check that it says removed. I could again verify the pending items going down if I was interested, but this should be now assert false. Okay, so toggle in queue, we should be good to go. Try it again. And this time we got zero is not equal to two. Okay, so, oh yes. So uh, part of this is recipe A itself is literally the only pending item, right? The only reason that I had three here is because I created a new one here um, and we also had added a new one here. So this one actually added two, which is why this is three and it actually makes sense why this should be zero. Okay, so let's try that again and we get everything running great. Okay, so now I can feel pretty confident about this toggle working. Um, at least to the point where I can implement it and verify visually. But the automated test, I think, does prove this to us, right? And so that's what we want to start with.